What's up guys? Today I want to talk about something really important and this was something that is very dear to me, very close to me because when I was in medical school I wish someone would have told me this so that I could have been much better than what I am right now. These are some very important things that you should be doing right now if you are in medical school. So now that I finished medical school I realized that there are certain things that I should have focused on much more and that are not really focused on while you're in medical school. So I'm going to skip all the boring parts about you should study well, you should study hard, but because it, it's very generic and generic advice leads to generic results. And we're not here to become generic, we're here to excel. Because at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I study hard, but what do I study and how do I study? Look, you have to study hard in medical school anyways, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be doing that. But certain things in medical school are not touched upon pretty well. The first thing is ECGs. Now I know ECGs is one of the biggest nightmares for any medical students or any fresh graduates because it's one of the most underlooked part of medicine. Probably due to the fact that it's confusing, it's difficult to understand. Just by looking at lines, you're supposed to figure out what's going with the patient heart. And due to this, medical students tend to like study a little bit of it but not understand it completely so that they tend to forget in the future. So I had the same issue. ECGs was one of the toughest area for me like any other medical student. But what I decided to do was I knew for a fact that this was one of the most important tools that you should be having as a medical student. It happened to me so many times when I came to the hospital, the first time I meet a consultant, he gives me an ECG and tells me, what is it? He gives you an ECG and asks you to ask interpret it. So I decided myself that I'm going to figure it out. So what I started doing was I started all the way to the bottom. Now, once again, my school provided me with basic lessons, but it wasn't enough for my understanding. And I had to go into depth of it to understand. So I started watching a lot of YouTube videos and I started learning the basics. I started learning what the ECG is about, what the waves means, what does each lead represent like what are the leads that represent which part of the heart so I understood what it was once I got the grasp of the basic ECG I then started looking at what all the variations could be what does ST elevation means what's ST depression what does PT means then once I understood all the basics that's not where I stopped now this is where a lot of medical students go wrong they learn the basics and they stop no you have to do the second point which is practice 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 so I bought this book which had 150 ECGs with problems and answers and stuff and I started doing five ECGs every single day so if you think about it like it did because it didn't take a lot of time five ECGs every single day I used to do it I used to make the mistakes look at what the book ex explains and uh, I did it every single day consistently. So I'm going to link the book in the description below and I think it's an amazing book for you to practice ECG. It doesn't explain the basic but it's amazing to practice once you know the basics. Once I finished those 150 ECGs, I was really, really good with it. And now, no more am I scared of ECGs. In fact, I actually like it. Anytime I see an ECG, I want to look at it and interpret it. So it became a really good thing in my life. And it just helped me to become a better medical student and in the future it's going to help me. So that's something that I advise you, whatever year you are in, year one, year two, year three, it does not matter. Go on YouTube, watch videos, learn the basics and practice. Because ECG is something that only your school can only teach you so much. The remaining will come with practice and that depends on you. The second section was radiology, x-rays, CTs and ultrasound. Yes, I put it in that specific order because x-ray is the most important part. CT and ultrasound, maybe not so much. And uh, this is something that I still lack and I'm still working on because we did not really do a lot of x-rays and radiology very well in medical school. Or maybe we did, but I did not practice enough. So once again, even over here, make sure you go online, look on YouTube. There are so many courses that can teach you ECGs right down from the bottom and build your knowledge up. So in the future, when you look at an x-ray, you will be much more better than the rest of the students. The last, and I feel this is the most important as well, is pharmacology, more specifically antibiotics. What I mean by that is, you need to understand which antibiotics is more sensitive to which type of bacteria. So when you're studying pharmacology, that's what you need to understand. Why certain antibiotics work for certain bacteria and certain antibiotics do not. So when you do come to pathology and when you come to internal medicine, 
you will understand better as to why certain medi medication is given in certain diseases whereas these same medications are not given in other diseases it will help you understand pharmacology better and give you a greater grasp of the subject these are the only three that i felt were the most underlooked part of medicine mostly because either they are very difficult confusing or straight up boring sometimes it all depends on how you look at it that people tend to pay less attention to these subjects but honestly these three areas are fundamental for you to become a good doctor so i implore you these were three things that i could have done better in medical school i'm happy that at least i did one right but had i had to go back to medical school again i would pay much more attention to ecgs x-rays ultrasounds and antibiotics which will really help me grasp and in the future help me in the clinical scenario so that's about it for this video guys i hope this video really helped you if you're a medical student make sure you give me a like share this video with your, with your medical school friends because this will open their eyes to things that they're not even looking towards and it'll help them and later they'll thank you as well comment in the comment section below and tell me what's up you know your comments are my oxygen and the more you give me comments the better i feel to make great videos for you guys follow me on my social media Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.